Barry, thank yes, you for joining us. It's my pleasure. It really is my pleasure. I understand you have a wealth of experience with microwaves. Can you begin by explaining to us how you began your career in microwave technology? Yes, of course. Um, in 1960, I was in the Royal Navy and I, I worked partly with the underwater bomb disposal unit, partly with microwave warfare and some of the other time with radar. Microwaves were involved in all of those three different areas. So whilst I was in the Royal Navy, I trained in all aspects of microwave technology. Uh -huh. And as anybody will tell you that's been in the forces, uh, the training you receive is second to none. Uh, you, you practice it, you talk about it all day, you sleep it. Um, so since 1960, I have been involved in all aspects of microwave technology. After that, uh, a part of my job, because I had microwave expertise, was to question captured spies during the Cold War when Russia and America were within seconds of global nuclear war. And microwaves by then were really sophisticated stealth weapons. And a part of my job was to find out from any spies who had been captured uh, what the current knowledge was in that part of the world. Now, this, this technology is truly frightening, really frightening. Well, this and is why it, it's microwave weapons yeah. uh, were, were introduced <clears throat> from the 1950s, 60s, 70s to the present day. Um, and this is another level of proof. They are so effective, if you're not in a hurry to get rid of somebody, they are so effective as a stealth weapon to yeah. beam somebody, and this is, has been done many times and it's recorded. Uh, you can beam people you don't like as a government to give them cancer, breast cancers, neurological illnesses, uh, you can choose what you want them to get. You can choose? Oh, you can choose. <clears throat> you can choose which pulse frequency you want to affect the brain with. You can, choose, you can choose the level of microwave irradiation and the speed that you want them to become ill. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it really is a perfect stealth weapon. And all you need to do is rent a house opposite someone you want to get rid of or a group of people you want to get rid of and just beam them. It, it, the most famous case during the Cold War was the Moscow embassy siege where in Moscow they beamed the entire American embassy and gave them cancer. Did they cause cancers in all the staff or in, in a lot of the staff? Or? Most of the staff, the children most of the children got leukemia, the women developed breast cancer, the gentlemen uh, developed cancers. I, I think after about 18 months the entire staff was changed and then the following 18 months the entire staff was changed again. And by that time people realised what was going on and they found that they were being irradiated by microwaves and rather than say, oh, isn't this disgusting? What have we sunk to? They thought, isn't this wonderful? Let's develop this for ourselves. <laughs> and governments today are still perfecting microwave warfare. Still to this day, they're working <clears throat> on the weaponry. Still to this day, 2010, they are still perfecting the pulse frequencies. Uh, it, it's got very, very sophisticated. Um, the pulse frequencies, the, the, how long they can transmit, whether it can be one country to another, bouncing the microwaves off the ionosphere. So you don't even have to be in the same country. Bouncing the microwaves off the ionosphere, a lot of people won't have heard of this technology. You're talking about the harp. And you, if you have a super transmitter, uh, 
the microwaves, if you've been them, it's only a simple basic trigonometry. Yeah. But let's say um, I want to bring uh, economic ruin to a country that grows all of the world's wheat. Right. Okay. All I have to do is beam microwaves up to the ionosphere, which is like an invisible cloud around the planet, an iron cloud around the planet. The microwaves going up at a set angle will, will reflect uh -huh. off down onto this country. And if I continuously beam the wheat in this field, or the cattle, or the sheep, I can harm, I can reduce the immune system of the plants so that uh, they won't be healthy and they will die, and I can stunt their growth, and I can bring economic ruin to that country. I can harm all of the animals, the cows, the sheep. Uh, it, it's so easy to do, you only have to push a button, uh, and you can bring economic ruin to a country. Which countries have this technology already available? Is it all the countries in the world or just a couple of them? It may not be a wise thing to, thing to say um, on a live broadcast, um, but you can take my word for it that I know at least two super transmitters in the world that have this capability. And there are probably more uh, in areas that I do not have access to uh, and I cannot go to. But I know there are at least two. I need to just go back a little bit. Now. Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> back to your early days in the military. Mm -hmm. This technology was used by the British government. Oh, okay, Sorry. I can see where you're going. It was, it was right. used okay. by the British yeah. government um, um, against terrorists. We, we have, we have 8,300 papers. <clears throat> um, I, I have knowledge of 2,300 myself. And what the governments found was that you could induce, by, by changing the, the pulse frequency, <clears throat> uh, like Morse code of the microwaves going into the brain and interfering with the brain. By specialising on the pulse frequency, you could induce psychiatric illnesses to the point where a psychiatrist could not tell if it is a genuine psychiatric illness or an induced psychiatric illness. So what you can do, theoretically, is you can target an individual's brain. They may have auditory hallucinations where they hear things, which, which is actually quite common with microwaves, <clears throat> or show signs of schizophrenia. For instance, 6.6 .6 pulses a second can induce severe sexual aggression in men. So you, you could induce somebody to commit a really horrific sexual rape. Um, so technically what you could do is have somebody committed to a psychiatric hospital or a jail for a crime just by somebody saying that they had a psychiatric problem whereby they didn't. Yeah. There, there is that. You can target other parts of people's bodies. You can target the heart and cause heart seizures. You can target, target the lungs and cause bleeding. Uh, you can target, if you're clever enough, um, some of the essential glands in the body that control all of the hormonal systems. <laughs> so if, if you have dissidents or people that you don't like as a government, it's very, very easy these days to irradiate them and either have them wind up in jail or, or in a psychiatric hospital. And of course, there is no come on you. Yeah. Now, these weapons that the governments have and are still using, 
Are they more powerful than, for example, the Wi-Fi I might have in my front room or my cordless phone or a mobile phone transmitter? No, in, in fact, they're, they're actually the power is slightly less. Less? The power is slightly less. Um, the, the difference is, <clears throat> where you might use Wi-Fi, you might go in after work and do a couple of hours and then leave. Uh, and the Wi-Fi is going out in all directions. Here, they are targeting you probably with a beam. And right. it is on you all day. It can follow you everywhere you go and it can target you when you're asleep as well. So you're really getting a concentrated dose. It's a, it's a bit like um, putting the light on in your house and sitting with the light. Or have somebody follow you with a searchlight and uh -huh. beaming the searchlight on you all the time. So it, it's, there is a difference between that. But in fact the power can be less. It just takes longer. One specific paper uh, from the government that lists all of the illnesses that you can get from microwave sickness, including severe neurological disorders. Uh, we have a government uh, document that actually says this needs to be kept secret from the Western governments because it will affect the efficiency of the military, uh, the weapons industry, and it will also affect uh, industrial profit. We have the government telling us that this, this is technology the, is dangerous? This is the United States Defence Intelligence Agency advising the Western governments to keep this secret so that they can protect industrial profit and military f functions. Kind of startling really, isn't it? It is so horrific that if it wasn't real, if somebody wrote a book on this, I would say this is so stupid, you could never make up a story like this. But, and it all goes back, it goes back to the 50s, the 60s and the 70s, when microwaves were found to be such a perfect weapon and so dangerous to the military, that the United States Defence Intelligence Agency told the Western governments to keep this quiet. And they did. And this is why we have this. We have documents that show that governments pay people to experiment on people against their wishes. Well, not against their wishes, without even telling them. So, and, and we have all this information going back to 1976. Everything was known by 1976. Everything. We needed no more proof, no more research, nothing was needed. In. And we have the, drawn up in this country, the Nuremberg Treaty. <clears throat> and the Nuremberg Treaty was signed by all of the nations of the world. And it is a very specific treaty and what it says is that no human being will be experimented upon without his or her consent and before they give consent they have the legal right to understand all of the implications the health problems the future health problems and they have the legal capacity to say no and where this is relevant here um, is that there is only one exception with the Nuremberg Treaty. And that is a doctor such as yourself may experiment on his or herself only. That is the only exception. It is section five. So... No human being is allowed to be experimented upon. 